Okay, today's project is a statue of Nathan Drake from Uncharted 4, but it's this hyper stylized look that the designer said was reminiscent of, if you remember Disney Infinity, they had this chunky stylized angular look to them. And that's something that was replicated in this model. I've already glued up a lot of the model and I've already coated it with some primer and given it a rough sanding, but I need to go and give it a couple more passes of 220 sandpaper. Now, generally most of my pieces are of a mechanical nature. If I do a statue or a maquette, it's something like I have a, an Iron Man, a Boba Fett. You'll notice that these statues all have one thing and that's no exposed skin tone. Exposed skin tone is something that I've always had trouble getting exactly right because if you get it wrong, it could end up looking goofy or like it's a skin suit or just not human. They look end up looking plastic or waxy. It just doesn't have that life to it. So generally try to, to avoid things that would require me to make skin tones. So been a little hesitant to figure this one out, but I think I have a grasp on how to get an accurate skin tone. So let's begin. All right, so the next step is figuring out what colors go where. The pants are gonna be a, I think there's some kind of either tan jean, a canvas material in the game, or some kind of khaki, or uh, I'm not exactly sure what they are. First color would be this golden brown. That's a good base just a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of burnt umber. That should be a fine basis. The first thing I want to paint would be the pants and then the leather sections, such as the belts and the, the holsters and the wristwatch. Then after I've done the leathers, then I'll do the shirt. Then finally, I would go on to the skin tone. Skin tone is not my strong suit, so I'm gonna to try to figure it out. That seems about the right color. The pants seem to have completely dried. Next up is the leather straps, like the, the belt and the holsters. I think I'm gonna go straight burnt umber on these just because it's the deepest brown that I have. Go for a finer detail brush. One thing that I read recently was not to be too precious with your edges, like on this bandolier holster section. Make sure that it's properly coated because I'll be coming back later with uh, blue and it's more important to get it covered. Onto the shirt. The color of the shirt seems to shift from scene to scene, and I looked online, and it seems like every other picture that you see of the shirt is a slightly different color. It's usually this blue color. Sometimes it's got a little bit of purple, sometimes it's got a little bit of green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one part purple, one part green, per everything else blue.
that's a pretty good color. I'm gonna throw in a little bit more of the dark blue. I think now that I'm seeing it on the model, this blue is still too bright, but it's an adequate base coat and I can refine it later. Now, one of the reasons why I created this channel to begin with is the mindset of Cunningham's Law. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Cunningham's Law, it basically says the best way to get the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question but to post the wrong answer. Taking that philosophy, I am trying to share my art, and in turn, if somebody was to come along and give me a better alternative to the way I'm doing things, then I would more than appreciate it. And in turn, in future videos, I would embrace that new way of doing things. So in doing things wrong, or not as well as I could, I hope to learn and to teach others a better way of doing what I did wrong. That's kind of my principle and kind of the principle of this channel and the basic meaning of Cunningham's Law. Any sort of constructive criticism would be appreciated. That step is done. I was a little bit more sloppy than I intended to and got some blue spilled over into the brown sections, but cleanup is always inevitable when doing something like this, simply because it's hard to keep your fingers clean or to, to not accidentally put the piece down in wet paint. So I can't tell, but a portion of my footage might have just gotten corrupted. So uh, to do a quick recap, I painted the hair on the face and am now preparing to work on skin tone. So, what I was told, the easiest way to do a skin tone like this would be to get orange and dilute it with white. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. But first, I'm gonna give all the skin tone areas just a coat of white, even it out and increase my chances of hopefully doing something reasonable. Again, I have very little confidence with my ability to paint skin tone, so this is a learning experience for me particularly. I'm going to be putting on a very thin coat of white. Okay, Google. What time is it? It's 3.16. Hey. Alright, now onto the other arm. This arm makes me super nervous because of these fingers that I'm going to snap one off and it's going to be a pain to re-glue it. So I'm going to let this layer dry for a couple minutes and then I'm going to come back and start the actual skin tone. Next up is the skin tone and apparently the way to do it is you start with orange and then a whole lot of white and this seems like a pretty good base tone.
I'm really liking this color so far. It's not too pink like some of the other skin tones that I've tried because I would start with a red and now I'm starting with an orange so it circumvents a lot of the pinkiness. Okay, now on to the really intimidating part is the face. Because the face is where you look first. It's the part that really brings out the most character. It's kind of the part that pulls the whole piece together usually. And if I mess up the face, it kind of messes up the whole piece. Now I wouldn't say that's good yet, but I'd say it's the start of something half decent. Okay, well I'm gonna let that dry. And at this point, I the body should have certain portions that have dried enough to start working again. I am going to let both of these dry for a few minutes and I shall be back. So, just as I was starting the eyes, my main camera, my close-up camera, and my audio recorder all decided to go out at the same time, but the eyes are looking okay right now. I think I got the shape and the color and the size mostly correct. Now it's time for the pupils and the iris. So Drake has this steely blue color. Start by mixing together some turquoise and gray. Not gonna need a ton of this. Okay. Now here comes another stressful part. All the face has been stressful, but this is another stressful part. certainly looks surprised, but I think I can fix that a little bit. I think it's because he's full-lidded right now, and he needs to be half-lidded to have his calm, collected look like he usually looks. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of orange and a little bit of pink. Try to create a bit of a kind of a color to help add contrast to the darker sections of the skin and give the illusion of shadows like in between the fingers, the, the shadows that are created when the fingers are close next to each other. Here we go. So now he is half lidded, so he's less deer in headlights. It's heading towards good, I'd say. Next thing I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do a skin tone wash. I've seen this online, I've never tried it before. This whole thing is a bunch of stuff that I've never tried before. What I'm gonna do is water down some paint. They'll be hopefully diluted enough to act as a wash to just darken the skin to give it a, a secondary natural looking tone. Mix it into a muddy brown wash. I'm gonna start on the hands just to see how it goes. Oh, that's pretty good. And then see what stays behind. Yeah, that kind of gives it a much warmer color. I don't know if the correct color is coming through on camera or not, but it's 
this is a very it's much more of a lifelike tone okay now to the face Moving on from trying to figure out how to do skin tones, I'm still struggling here to get it to look natural. Moving on from there, I want to start in on the little details. So I'm going to put in a few light blue details, like I'm going to make his collar a lighter shade of blue. Now I'm going to take uh, some of this bright blue, mix it with the tiniest amount of black that I can. That's not exactly tiny, but it'll work. Wet my brush, using this as a low light color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this black and blue color, and I'm just going to trace certain lines. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating shadows with this darker blue and it kind of brings out the shapes. So next what I'm going to try to do, similar to what I just did to the shirt, is bring out some of the shadows on the face and particularly the hands. I'm going to start with the closed fist, kind of try to bring back some of the spots that have been lost through the paint buildup. Next, what I want to do is do some highlighting and detailing on the pants. There are these big shadowy parts and these big creases that I think would be nice to have some highlights and lowlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this white and a little bit of this brown and use that to create a highlight right there. The way the highlights would work is if the sun is hitting it, this crease gets a little bit lighter. So now I'm going to start working on the spots that would be hypothetically in the shadow. So the pants have been highlighted and low lighted. 
torso has got its highlights and lowlights. At this point, I'm going to add the silver details, and then I'm going to clean it up off camera, and then I think it should be done. So I'm going to start off with the silver belt buckle. Next, the silver on the watch. Okay, now the silver on the pistol. That's the, I'm just doing the slide in silver. So the inner barrel stays black, the handle stays black. I think I'm gonna do the lower receiver also in silver, but I'm keeping the barrel And then finally, the little buckles on his holster are silver. I'd say, generally, I'm very pleased for having very little experience painting realistic skin tones on people. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. It's got flaws, but for a, a first try, doing something with a realistic skin tone, I think it's pretty good.